world news tonight. Another extension. Israel and Hamas extend Gaza truce by one day in last minute deal. Foiled plot. US accuses Indian official of orchestrating plot to kill Sikh separatists in New York City. End of an era. Henry Kissinger, DVC diplomat who shaped world affairs, dies age 100. Zootopia. World's first Zootopia land begins trial operation at Shanghai Disney Resort. This is other there in a world news tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening, you are joining us on World News. We begin tonight in Pakistan with a disconcerting update on the country's air quality index. Pakistan's two largest cities, Karachi and Lahore, continue to grapple with toxic smog as residents expressed health concerns arising from the air pollution. Today, Karachi had an air quality index of 218 around, according to Swiss group IQ Air, which categorized the air quality as very unhealthy. Lahore's air quality index stood at an unhealthy 161 as a smog lightened after overnight showers. An AQI between 101 and 200 is considered unhealthy, particularly for sensitive groups, while an AQI between 201 and 300 is said to be very unhealthy, and above 300 is hazardous. The state government of Pakistan's Punjab has attributed the pollution to rubble being burnt in neighboring India and said that cloud seeding plans to introduce rain and could disperse smog and haze were underway. Now over in the US, Nikhil Gupta, an Indian national, is accused of trying to hire hitmen for $100,000 in cash. Authorities in the United States have said that an Indian government official directed a failed plot to assassinate a Sikh separatist on U.S. soil as they announced charges against a man accused of orchestrating the murder attempt. Federal prosecutors said that Nikhil Gupta had worked with an Indian government intelligence and security worker in a Palestine effort to kill a Sikh activist in New York. Prosecutors did not name the Indian official or the target, but described the target as a critique of the Indian government and an advocate for an independent Sikh state in the Punjab region, home to a large number of Sikhs and once the site of a movement to create Khalistan, a Sikh homeland independent from India. The charges have come a week after a senior member of the administration of President Joe Biden said that the U.S. had thought a plot to kill a Sikh separatist in the U.S. and two months after Canadian authorities accused the Indian government of involvement in the assassination of a Sikh activist in Canada. Their officials said Gurpatwan Singh Panun, who says he is a dual citizen of the United States and Canada, was a target of the Floyd pot. India's embassy in Washington was yet to comment on the charges. In some hopeful news, Israel and Hamas agreed to extend the ceasefire in their war by at least one more day, minutes before the six-day truce was due to expire. Meanwhile, two Palestinian attackers opened fire at a bus stop this morning at the entrance of Jerusalem, killing at least two people and wounding eight others. Israel and Hamas have agreed to stop fighting for at least one more day. That decision came Thursday morning, just minutes before the end of a six-day truce. In a statement, Israel's military said it would continue the ceasefire as mediators seek the release of more hostages held in Gaza in exchange for Palestinian prisoners. Hamas said in a statement the truce would continue for a seventh day. Hours before the announcement, Palestinians in Ramallah celebrated as Israel released 30 Palestinian prisoners from jails in exchange for Hamas releasing 16 Israeli hostages. Among the Palestinians who were released Wednesday was activist Ahed Tamimi, who gained fame for slapping an Israeli soldier when she was a teenager. She was arrested earlier this month on suspicion of inciting violence. Similar scenes of jubilation were seen in southern Israel as some of the Israeli hostages who were captured by Hamas militants on October 7th returned home. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Israel on Thursday morning to discuss extending the pause in fighting. In a statement, the White House said U.S. President Joe Biden was determined to secure the release of all hostages held by Hamas after American Liat Benin was released Wednesday. U.S. officials also want Israel to narrow its zone of combat, 
in the event of an operation in southern Gaza to avoid the repeat of massive Palestinian civilian deaths from Israel's northern Gaza attacks. The UK Health Security Agency has announced that the UK's first human case of swine flu strain H1N2 has been detected. More on that now. Confirmed by the UK Health Security Agency on Monday as virus A H1N2V, officials say that the infection was found during routine flu screening at a GP surgery in North Yorkshire. Officials have confirmed that the infected patient has now fully recovered after only suffering a mild illness, including respiratory symptoms. Experts are searching for the source of the infection as the infected person was not known to have worked with pigs. While there has been previous outbreaks of similar swine flu, namely the H1N1 virus in 2009, there has only been 50 cases of H1N2 swine flu virus reported worldwide in the past 20 years. Latest updates on the road to the White House now. 2024 Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley is seeing a swell in media coverage, new interest from big dollar donors and increasing chatter that she is poised to make a real run at Donald Trump. Nikki Haley is having a moment. I'm playing to win it. I'm going to finish it. And then we're going to get our country back on track. The 2024 Republican presidential candidate is seeing a swell in media coverage, new interest from big dollar donors, and rising speculation that she might be the sole contender poised to make a real run at Donald Trump. But there is buzz, and there is reality. The reality is that the 51-year-old former UN envoy and South Carolina governor faces a massive uphill battle to take down the former president and gain the Republican presidential nomination. Poll tracking site 538 shows Trump with the support of just under 60 percent of Republicans. In distant second, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, just shy of 13 percent. Behind him, with 10 percent support, is Haley. Trump also has large leads in early Republican nominating states such as Iowa and New Hampshire. Still, Haley has been gaining ground in some polls on the back of strong performances in debates. The polls show her tied with DeSantis in Iowa and surpassing him in New Hampshire. But one Republican pollster told Haley may still have a narrow path to the nomination if she can stage strong showings in the early nominating races and pull off a victory in her home state of South Carolina. It might attract media coverage and money, giving her candidacy momentum. But again, winning South Carolina seems like a stark challenge. According to Real Clear Politics, which aggregates poll numbers, Trump has a 30-point edge over the field there, with Haley in second place. Haley's only hope might be a one-on-one -on -one race against the frontrunner, which would require other contenders dropping out. Rival South Carolinian Republican Senator Tim Scott did that earlier this month. A Haley spokesperson told, quote, The field has consolidated and will continue to consolidate in the coming weeks, and as the only candidate with momentum, Nikki is gaining the most from that. A Trump spokesperson did not respond to questions about whether the campaign would soon turn its attention to Haley. Political analysts largely agree that Haley's best chance against Trump would be facing him head-on, without other rivals. But even that would require a significant and perhaps unprecedented swing in Republican voter opinion. The one remaining wild card could be the 91 criminal charges Trump faces in four pending trials and a number of civil lawsuits set to begin next year and overlapping with the Republican primary. But it's unclear whether any of those trials might be resolved before the nominating contest closes. Welcome back. Data from the Federal Statistics Office showed that German inflation eased more than expected in November, falling to its lowest level since June 2021 due to a decline in energy prices. German inflation eased to its lowest level in around two and a half years in November. Data showed Wednesday it fell to 2.3%, better than analysts projected, and the lowest since June 2021. Germany's Statistics Office said lower energy prices were a key factor which saw a 4.5% year-on-year drop. 
In addition, food prices rose 5.5%, less than the 6.1% increase seen the previous month. Economists pay close attention to German inflation data. It carries weight as it publishes its figures one day before the Eurozone releases its data. Analysts project Eurozone inflation will ease to 2.7% in November. Investors liked what they heard as it boosted hopes the European Central Bank will cut interest rates next year. German shares led gains in Europe on Wednesday as the DAX touched a four-month high. Spain also released harmonised inflation figures Wednesday, showing it fell slightly to 3.2%. Henry Kissinger, a former US Secretary of State and National Security Advisor who escaped Nazi Germany in his youth to become one of the most influential and controversial foreign policy figures in American history, has died. He was 100 years old at the time of his demise. Not many people have been awarded a Nobel Peace Prize and been accused of being a war criminal. But that's Henry Kissinger, dubbed the master apprentice, revered and reviled. He divided almost as much as he united. Kissinger advised American presidents for decades, shaping the Vietnam War and Cold War, helping America open to communist China. We seek an open world. A world in which no people, great or small, will live in angry isolation. And was an architect of the first presidential visit. Kissinger also forged a nuclear arms treaty between the US and the Soviet Union. Against almost any form of attack, we base our policy on, on a threat that will involve the destruction of all mankind. And this is too risky and I think too expensive. And helped bring an end to the Vietnam War. I have to say, I have never dealt with a group of people as treacherous as the North Vietnamese leadership. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1973 with a North Vietnamese leader who refused to accept it. Kissinger's role in the secret bombing of Cambodia in 1969 attracted ire. I would then recommend that you start bombing the Vegeta than within 48 hours. 50,000 to 150,000 people died. It led to the rise of the Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot, a brutal regime responsible for the genocide of 2.4 million people. In 1975, Kissinger secretly approved an Indonesian invasion of East Timor. Tens of thousands of people died and allowed Chilean dictator General Augusto Pinochet to take control in a coup. Kissinger once told a journalist he saw himself as a cowboy hero. He was a giant on the world stage. Climate experts warned Australians of soaring bushfires during the El Nino summer. The country is bracing for its summer bushfire season with the climate crisis fanning hotter and drier conditions. As Australians struggle with spring season bushfires, authorities are warning them to brace for worse as their summer approaches. The National Council for Fire and Emergency Services said in its bushfire outlook on Thursday, hotter and dry conditions are set to hit large parts of the country under the effect of the El Nino weather pattern. And more capital cities face an increased risk of fire, according to Australia's emergency management minister. Many experts have said climate change is fueling a worsening bushfire crisis. Simon Bradshaw, director of research at the non-profit Climate Council, says Australians can and must do more to curb the risks. We've already faced severe fire seasons, extreme heat waves. We're now seeing a lot of that really supercharged against this backdrop of climate change. Good news is there's so much we can still do to limit future harms but it means really driving down our emissions this decade and learning how to look after each other in the face of these challenges. And we need to be taking every opportunity at this moment to be part of the solution because every decision we make now, every ton of carbon left in the ground, that's a little investment in a safer, more secure future for us here in Australia and communities around the world. Some experts have warned this fire season could be the worst since the so-called Black Summer fires of 2019 to 2020, that killed 33 people and destroyed an area the size of Turkey. Despite the record rain in November sweeping parts of eastern Australia, Thursday's bushfire report said this year's record dry conditions and above average temperatures will likely continue well into 2024. 
Officials urged residents to update their fire safety plans and pack emergency and evacuation kits. Elon Musk called his recent endorsement of an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory foolish and said he was sorry for that post on X, the social media platform he owns and renamed from Twitter. But speaking at a deal book summit, Musk also struck back in expletive Lagan language at the advertisers who have fled the platform over his post. This morning, Elon Musk is apologizing for endorsing an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory on his social media platform X. The world's richest man had a message for the companies who pulled ads from his platform, telling them don't advertise and using an expletive multiple times to emphasize his point. Musk has faced mounting criticism after he agreed with a user on X who falsely claimed Jewish people are stoking hatred against white people. Musk saying the user was saying the actual truth. Amid the fallout, Musk visited Israel, touring a village where dozens of people were killed on October 7. The controversy could reportedly cost X up to $75 million in lost ad revenue by the end of the year. It comes as Musk launches the long-awaited yeah. Tesla Cybertruck today. Oh my God! Well, four years after a prototype was unveiled, its distinct look drawing mixed reactions. Its so-called armored glass proving to be anything but. Sir. <laughs> oh man! Many experts say the polarizing vehicle could be another dent in the company's bottom line. Welcome back. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi said that China's cluster of flu cases are under effective control. For more on that story and more, let's take on the world in a minute. China's Foreign Minister Wang Yi said that a recent increase in respiratory illnesses in China is a common issue faced by all countries and that Chinese authorities have it under effective control. The Spanish Maritime Rescue Services said that four migrants died after falling from a speedboat at a beach in Cadiz in southern Spain. Britain's King Charles and the President of Nigeria held bilateral talks in Dubai today ahead of the COP28 summit. The Russian and Ukrainian armies continue to exchange fire with each claiming hitting the other's military targets including fighter jets, munition depots and missile systems. About 200 South Korean farmers who breed and raise dogs for human consumption that they rally today near presidential office in the capital Seoul, demanding the government's scrap a plan to ban the controversial centuries old practice. That is all we have for you on World News tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Atadarna English. Tonight, we are leaving you in China as Shanghai Disneyland showcases a trackless ride to hunt down Zootopia's character, Bergwella, and a show featuring Zootopia residents. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.